Well, I think Mike made a great comment about the catalyst for this run in equities over the last couple of weeks. We certainly have seen institutional money being put to work. We've seen rebalancing. Um, I think this, the uh, the weakness in financials today is, is most telling because if we think about what's happening, we're starting to see or, or hear some stories about credit risk, right? We're starting to understand that, you know, there might be implications that go well beyond, you know, with this flat or inverted in some places yield curve. It's not all about recession. It's about what is the stress that is going to be put on some of these asset classes where investors have frankly been going to hide out based on low yields in the investment grade space. And so I think there's a lot of things that we need to be looking at over the course of the next few weeks. We've had some nice earnings reports over the last two weeks that have given us some faith that we're seeing the Chinese consumer coming back. We're seeing uh, consumer sentiment in general from some of these companies uh, be very positive. Can that continue? We're going to get the financials right away, get that quick hit. Last quarter didn't start out so well. We had a big miss for JPM, for instance, coming into the quarter. So I think we're going to enter into a period here where we're going to be looking at outlooks. We're going to be thinking about what is the impact of some of this credit risk that we're starting to, to hear about as a potential risk. And does that potentially put the Fed at a slower pace despite these inflation numbers? I think that's going to be a much bigger story for us going into the second quarter, Sarah. But we know one thing we know, Shannon, is that we are entering this period in a different liquidity environment that, than we've had over the past few years, and that economic growth is slowing down. We don't know how much, but, but we know that that's happening as fiscal stimulus wears off, as the Fed is hiking rates, as we are dealing with inflation we haven't seen in decades. And, and we've seen what kind of bumpiness that can mean for portfolios this first quarter. My question is, has anything changed in that outlook that, that would make you do anything differently in the coming months? Well, I think everybody needs to acknowledge the fact that we are obviously going to be moving into a slower economic environment. Um, if you think about what has happened over the last decade when we've been in periods of slower GDP growth, whether it's globally or here in the United States, you're looking for growth in other parts of your portfolio. And so we talk about these tech stocks that have been under pressure and going back to free cash flow, consistent earnings growth, valuations. There's a lot of technology or growth adjacent companies across sectors that are going to benefit in a lower growth environment. You need to get earnings growth from somewhere. And if it's not going to be a secular tailwind like fiscal spend and monetary policy looseness, then you have to look for growth elsewhere. I think we're going to see um, some real nuanced trading over the course of the next three months or so as people look for that growth against this more challenging economic backdrop. And you like healthcare still? Is that still one of your favorite sectors? Absolutely. So if you talk about secular headwinds and tailwinds, there's a huge secular tailwind for a health care. We're continuing to see, you know, people taking health care in their hands. We're continuing to see the importance of technology getting out into rural areas, being able to leverage, you know, the network that we have in order to deliver health care to an increasing population globally. And we think that there's a lot of opportunity there to, again, get really strong fee cash flow, dividends, consistent, sustainable growth in the healthcare space. It's not mm -hmm. just a defensive sector anymore.